So how's the difficult second album going then? Yeah, I'll take the silence as it's bad. So you want loads of inputs and outputs for your door, you greedy devil. I know how you feel, I'm one of those people. So let's aggregate two UMC1820 Behringer audio interfaces into one combined Frankenstein with 16 inputs and 20 outputs, which I'm then going to route through into the desk uh, using Reaper and a Mac. How exciting. Go out to the shop, buy yourself loads of licorice, and then got 10 of them plugged in this unit, and there's another unit behind that with 10 of those plugged in as well. So follow the cable down, this will all be tidied up, I only did it a couple of days ago. And then I've got that in, in inputs. This is the uh, tape inputs of the, of the, all the way across from 1 to 20. So they're all plugged in. Normal inputs I've got on the line in, tape input for, for that. Uh, if, you've got, if you've got a mixer with only, uh, with only line ins, stick them in the line in. Obviously make sure you both uh, the units are turned on, otherwise the computer's not going to recognise them. Okay, so mosey on over to uh, Launchpad. Audio MIDI, audio MIDI setup, which you'll find in the other file. Click plus, create aggregate device. Then you've got a choice of what you want to add in. So you could have as many as, you, you know, as, many as you've got plugs in the back, basically. So add that one, add that one and it automatically defers that one of those two will be following the other one. So in this particular case, it's that one, if you want to change it. So in order, one of those has to be clicked, and that way the, the, one of those is the slave to the other one, so they both will run at the same speed. Otherwise, um, they, they go off kilter and uh, across the recording, you, you end up getting slightly, slightly mismatched sort of speeds. Simple as that, that's all you've got to do on that part of it. And then in Reaper, now I've got a, I've opened up a template, so I'm I'm ready to record each time with the template, which is already set to use those inputs. So click, open up, wakey wakey. So. 20 channels there, matching the 20 channels I've got plugged in on the back on the back of my desk. And then the routing, you go to options, preferences, device. So there's my aggregate device I just created. Obviously I'm not going to use that because I've already got the combined one, which is, is exactly the same principle. So once you do that, if you want to go to a different output, you could Run it through your built-in output if you wanted to. Your call uh, again. I'm I'm running it because I'm I'm doing it primarily for outs rather than ins. Obviously, I definitely need to use combine that way. I've got my 20 outputs. Uh, okay, so all's good on that. Don't need to change it. So routing going down into the into the desk. I've got my 20 tracks, which matching my 20 tracks on the on my actual physical mixer desk. Nothing's going to the master send. So track one in this particular case, you configure it and you want it to be that it's the mono one. So out one is, is going out one, going into track one on the mixer. Same with two, da -da -da -da, all the way through. And when it gets to number 11, then we're back to track one again, because obviously there's the, there's the matching second machine. So that runs to 8, and then you, you, what would be your output 9 and 10 is either 21 and 22 or 23 and 24. Uh, in fact, let's, let's find out. If I go to that one, yeah, 21, 22. So I keep, when recording, I'm, because I pretty much use just one track going in unless I was going to have to reconfigure to do you know, a multi-track in. So I'm just running everything through number one on, on the main first, um, first of the Behringer devices. If I wanted to do multiple tracks, then I would click that one to change it to number two, that one, you know, the next one to number three, if necessary. They will all, all monitor down through 
whichever tracks they're assigned to there. Um, and then that on the desk, I've got the faders which connect in there. So I keep everything on that on that level there. Oopsie see days, they've been moved. Just want to keep those basically on zero. So make sure you get a sig good signal coming in there. Then if you keep your uh, desk on zero, you've got a bit of leeway if you need to go up and above. And obviously you can then yeah, drop down should you need to. Clear as mud. Um, if an idiot like me can do it, anybody can. Uh, enjoy give it a go i highly recommend it then you can play with uh, you know, the play with old-fashioned toys like this one uh, get out of the box get out of the box for once anyway do you like and subscribe gubbins and stuff so uh, take care see you soon